Okay, so welcome back again to another um, session in the in our registered master electrician online review. And for this this topic is about electrical circuits. So we'll be trying to know the different types of circuits, the and how to get the uh, to solve each of them so basically this is uh, this topic is about circuit analysis so before we go on to discussing the two common types of circuits or the simple types of circuits so we will first uh, discuss or review what is a circuit so a circuit is uh, basically a complete path in which the current can flow so usually a circuit consists of a source which is supplies the voltage the wire or the conductor in which the current can flow and the load or the resistance in which uh, hinders the flow of current so the first type of circuit is the series circuit so the resistances or loads are connected end to end so if we are going to draw the um in going to draw a series circuit so in a dc circuit so this will be the um, source which is a battery okay then so a series circuit is the resistance are connected end to end okay so we have here another resistance another resistance and another resistance okay so this will be our voltage source so this we will call that one as e then we have here our r1 our r2 and our r3 then we will have here our current I okay so the current will flow from positive to negative because that is the uh, engineering um, flow so we will uh, use that one in anal analyzing circuits but in reality as we discussed in the previous video it is from negative to positive so we will do this one in order for us to easily analyze the circuit okay so this circuit is a series circuit with three resistors or, or three resistors the resistors are connected in parallel so hey, parallel in series so the resistance are connected end to end if this is the end of one resistance it is connected to the other end of the resistor the other resistor which is r2 then if this is the end of r2 it is connected to the other end of r3 and the other end is connected back to the negative terminal of our battery and the other one is to the positive terminal so we will now get the uh, the uh, characteristics of a series circuit so because we have three resistances so we must get the total resistance and for series circuit the total resistance is equal to r1 plus r2 plus r3 or by definition the total resistance in a so in a series circuit is the sum of all the resistances connected in series on that circuit so we have three resistors here r1 r2 and r3 so the total resistance is the sum of r1 r2 and r3 so that's why it is plus okay now we can also apply Ohm's law because Ohm's law is the, as by definition of Ohm's law, that current is equal to the voltage applied to the circuit over the total resistance or the equivalent resistance. So, we could say R, but in this part we have three R. So, we, the total resistance of that is the sum of these three this which is the r3 so that's uh, rt so we must put here rt and this is now how we will solve for our current i 
Now each resistor will have its own um, will have its own current flowing on it. So for example, R1 will have a current of I1. Then R2 will have a current of I sub 2. And R3 will have a current of I3. So that will be so on and so forth. If we have a fourth res resistance or resistor connected in um, ser in series, so the current on that uh, resistance is also I sub 4. So if you look to the circuit, you notice that the current I is also the same current uh, traveling on I1 and also the same current traveling on I2 and also the same current traveling as I3. Therefore, we could say that in a series circuit, I is equal to I1 is equal to I2 is equal to I3 meaning that in a series circuit the total current is equal also to the individual current on the individual resistances or in each of the resistor the current flowing in each of the resistor is equal to the total current then because these are resistances so they will have also voltage drop which is equal to I1 equal to I2 uh, I2 and equal to E3 so sorry for um, having some uh, dif difficulty in reading my letters so I mismatch my I and E okay so if you are going to solve for uh, E1 so E1 if we are going to get the voltage at resistor R1, so this would be E1. So we could use what law? So that will be Ohm's law. So going back to our Ohm's law triangle, if you cannot memorize the formula. Okay, so we just, in our past video, I, I used the letter um, V, but it is just the same. V and E are uh, representation of voltages but usually in the in, in drawing a circuit uh, it is much common to use E so so that it will not be confused by the unit itself okay so we have this one will be I 1 and this will be R 1 okay so if we cover this one the E sub 1 so we could say that the voltage at resistor 1 is equal to I1 times I1 times R1. So let me correct this one because I've used um, V. So from now on, if, if we are going to have circuits, analyzing circuits, we will use E for, for the voltage, not V. And it's also the same if we are going to get the voltage at the resistor 2. So this will be equal to E sub 2 is equal to I sub 2 times R2. So that is using the same triangle. We will just replace our sub by 2. Then also for the, the voltage at resistor 3. So basically... E1, E2, and E3 are voltage drops. So this is equal to E sub 3 and R sub 3. Okay, so that is now the individual voltages drop or the individual voltage drop at each resistor or resistance. And it is also good to note that the supply voltage is equal to the sum of the voltage drops we have e is equal to e1 e sub 2 plus e sub 
3. So, for that is the characteristics of a series circuit. So, in on the other videos, we will be solving problems, series circuit problems. So, we will be using these formulas. Now, we will proceed to voltage division theorem. Okay. So, voltage division theorem is a theorem in which only applicable to to resistors to resistors connected in series to resistors in series okay okay so we have for example we will create a circuit here so we have here our battery then we have our source voltage uh, then we have here our resistance so this theorem is only applicable so for two resistors connected in series okay so we have r1 we have r2 then we are going to get uh, we also have here our voltage drop e sub 1 and our voltage drop e sub 2 okay so this formula is very easy so this is only uh, this is a uh, somewhat uh, shortcut in getting the individual voltage drops so for example if you are going to uh, get the voltage drop at resistor r1 which is e sub 1 so we could have the formula e sub 1 is equal to you write the you get the voltage source you multiply it by the resistor R1 because we are go going to get the resistor at R1 over the sum of the two resistances or the total resistance R1 plus R2. Okay, so that is how we will be going to solve for the voltage drop at resistor R1. Now, how about for E sub 2, the resistors, uh, the voltage drop for resistor 2 so this is same formula here but except we will use r2 because the resistance that we are now concerned with is r2 so r2 e times r sub 2 times the, uh, over or divide by the total resistance of the circuit which is r1 plus r2 so that is the formula so if you are going to get voltage drop at r sub 1 so you multiply the voltage source by the resistance the value of resistance in r1 then you get then divide divide by the total resistance of the circuit if the voltage drop at r sub 2 which is a sub 2 so you just replace the one here by 2 so you will have you will get the you will multiply the voltage source times the resistance the value resistance in r2 over the total resistance this is very useful if you are going to analyze resistances two resistances connected in series so we, we will expand this fa further when we are going to solve problems involving vis uh, voltage division theorem so the acronym for voltage division theorem is v d d Okay, we proceed. We have parallel circuits. So the resistances or loads are connected across each other. So that is a parallel circuit. So the, res the resistances or loads are connected across each other. Okay, so looks like I forgot to insert a slide. So let me first insert a slide over here so that we can have our discussion. Okay, we have new slide. So, 
As of now, I am using PowerPoint during the discussion, but later on, we will proceed to another application in which we could have the so um we could have the solving of solution much easier. Okay, so for example, we have three resistances. Okay, so we have three resistances. Okay, so let's put it a little farther from each other so that we could write our um, values okay so this will be these are the three resistances okay so we have here r1 we have here our r2 and here is r3 so by definition of parallel circuit, so the, res the resistances or loads are connected across each other. So across meaning across each other. So we will connect this one to this one to this one. And also this one is connected to this one, connected to this one. So that is now a parallel resistor. In order for us to make that a circuit, we will also connect across the three resistances a voltage source which is e okay then we have here our current which is i so we have here our i1 this here is our i2 and this right here is our I3. Then we have also an, a voltage drop, so we will just change the color. We will use uh, blue perhaps. So we have here E sub 1, so that is voltage drop for R1, E sub 2, and E sub 3. Okay, so we have now have a circuit. block for this one so we will get the total total uh, resistance of the circuit so the total resistance in a parallel circuit is equal to the, to the reciprocal of the sum of the circuit so if I will be writing this way so it will be much confusing so I will write first by the definition so the reciprocal of the total resistance of a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the reciprocal of the individual resistances. Okay. So this is the formula formula so if we have four resistances we can add here plus one over r4 so on and so forth but as of now we are only up to r3 so we will just end in r3 okay so if we are going to get the total resistance so we will use a little bit of algebra so we'll get the reciprocal of this one so rt to get the reciprocal because so we have the RT now because the reciprocal of 1 over RT is RT and that is the total resistance is equal to 1 over so we will also get the reciprocal of this one so 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R so a much better way to understand the formula is to convert them to convert the definition the resistances into conductance so as we know conductance is the reciprocal of the resistance so we could say from this formula that the total conductance in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the conductance in each of the resistances 
okay so i just wrote something in our circuit okay so the, the total uh, the sum of the conductance in each of our uh, in each resistances no so we could say this is g1 plus g2 plus g3 where in the individual a con conductance is the reciprocal of our resistance then if you are going to get the total resistance from the from our total conductance so we just get also the reciprocal of the one that will become one over g t so we have now you can use this formula if you can memorize it or this formula it's up to you now another characteristics of a series circuit is that the voltage source is equal to the voltage across each across each resistors or resistances or each load so okay so we have here e because there is no resistor here voltage drop here so therefore if we are going to analyze whatever is the voltage here then it will be also equal to the voltage here then uh, there is no resistance here so e1 is also equal to e2 and e2 is plus to a3 now for the current so uh, we have here our i1 so we just i1 i2 we have here our i3 okay so these three are called the branch current so branch branch current so the sum of the branch currents so the sum of the branch currents for example i1 plus i2 plus i3 is equal to the total resistance or our i so that is how we will be solving our i or we can also use the um, ohm's law so the ohm's law is still applicable to any type of circuit so we have getting the total current so i is equal to e the voltage source over the total resistance so in a parallel circuit the the total resistance is the reciprocal of the total conductance then in which the the total conductance is the sum of the individual conductance of each resistances in which an individual conductance is the reciprocal of the given resistance in each of the resistances then the voltage across each resistances is equal to the source then the sum of the branch circuit is equal to the total current so that is the characteristic of a parallel circuit then we have current division theorem also known as cdt so then we have here our acronym c d t so cdt is applicable to two resistances connected in parallel so, this, so like the voltage division theorem which is applicable in two resistors connected in series so the cdt is applicable to two resistances connected in parallel so we will draw here a circuit containing two resistances connected in parallel so this is our r1 this is our r2 so we have here the voltage across here is i2 and the voltage across this one is i1 
So we will connect our source. Okay, we'll connect our source, which is. equal to T then we have here our okay we have here our I so this would be our I so it CDT is applicable if we are going to solve the individual um, branch circuit. For example, I1. So it is like CDT, uh, like VDT voltage division theorem, but with a little twist. So you will write here I, so the total current, because in VDT we'll be using, uh, we are using the, to the source voltage. Here it is current, so we will use the total current. Then your I1 is the branch current flowing in R1. But if you are going to solve for I1, so you will use the resistance opposite to I1, which is I R sub 2. So this is multiplied by R sub 2 all over the total resistance. For I sub 2, so the same, the same principles, you have I, y, uh, I, okay, I just written the I a little bit longer and bigger, so we'll try to have some uh, neatness in our formulas, I, y, I times, because this is I2, the opposite of I. I2, the resistance opposite to I2 is R1. So R1 over R1 plus R sub 2. And that is now the formula for current division theorem. Then we have series parallel connected resistor. So a combination circuit which when simplified will result into E series circuit. So an example of that is we have here a source. We have our resistor here. Our resistor here. So we have another resistor connected in parallel. So two resistors connected in parallel. We have here R1, R2, uh, this have this one as R3, R2, and R1, and this will be our E. Okay, so if you are going to solve this one first, because this is a series parallel circuit, the equivalent circuit or the resulting circuit after combining the resistances must be a series circuit so if we are going to simplify this one so we will first simplify these two parallel resistances r2 and r3 so we will call this one as r sub p so in order to get r sub p so we will have the formula the reciprocal of the resistances the reciprocal of the so R2 plus R3 so as we discussed a moment ago about series uh, about parallel circuit so your equivalent circuit now is a simple series circuit so we'll have we have here E this is R1 and this is R P, and this is now our equivalent circuit. So the shortcut for that is equi-circuit circuit. So this one is our equivalent circuit for a series parallel connected resistors.
Then we have parallel series connected resistors, a combination circuit which when simplified, simplified will result into a parallel circuit. If you are going to have our, form, our uh, looks like I forgot to insert another um, slide. Okay, so let's just insert the slide. Where is it now? Here. New slide, then full slideshow. Okay, so we're back with a new slide. Okay, so we have a circuit. So a circuit, a series, a parallel series circuit. This one, so then we have another one. So let's have a razor, let's insert a serve. Okay. Let's so we have here our resistance and another resistance. Okay, so we have R3. So we have R2 and we have R1. And this is our E. So if we're going to simplify the circuit because it's a parallel series circuit in which the equivalent simple uh, simplified um, circuit will be a parallel circuit. So first we must um, get the equivalent circuit of these two. And as you can see, they are connected end to end. End to end. So this, they are connected in series. So we'll call this one as RS. So RS is equal to R2 plus R3. So our equivalent circuit now is just a simple parallel circuit of two resistors. So this is our R1. So, maybe next time if we'll be using the other application, we could write our lines straight somewhat. So, it's hard to uh, write using the keypad of my laptop. And this is our RS, this is our E. Yes. So, it, uh, I will just rewrite the run circuit R1. Okay. Let's just make the circuit a little uh, presentable. This is now our equivalent parallel circuit. Then we have delta connected, a delta and Y connected, re connected resistor. Okay. So with this um, circuit, okay. So why I cannot erase some things okay. so we could first draw the circuit or the connection itself so we have a delta so delta is in the form of a triangle um, maybe let's just write this one okay let's write so we we'll use the violet Okay, so we have delta connected, so it's in the form of a triangle. So when we say delta, the, the resistances are connected in the form of triangle so that um, it will create a delta connection. So this is the one. So we could say that this is, this is the resistance for, uh, this is RA small letter A, RB, and RC. Okay. Then we say Y. So we could put Y inside. So Y. Okay. So this is our Y. So this is R. 
x and you have this one as rx this is rz z as in zebra and this is r y okay so this circuit is very important in order for us to convert delta connected resistors into y connected resistors and to convert y connected resistors into delta connected resistor so we'll go first to y connected resistor so y we will have the equivalent delta connected so delta y to delta so the formula for that is just um, very easy okay so if for example we are going to get because the given the given is this one the y which is inside so we are going to get the equivalent resistances in delta so the resistance outside or on the side of the triangle so first we will get ra so ra so you will just um, get the product of each of the two resistances partner so a, pa a pair of the three resistances in y so the product then you add you get the sum of that so for example r x times r y plus so this is another this is the first pair then you have this one also r y times r z plus r the last one r z times r x r z times r x all over the uh, the resistance the resistance of the y connected resistor which is opposite to the delta connected resistor so our delta connected resistor is r a the delta connected resistor is r a so the o, the opposite of this one in the y connected resistor you are going to have the opposite is r z so this will be r z so that is for r a now for r b and r c, r c this portion here So this portion here, the numerator of our formula, will just be the same. So we just have this one as R, let's have R D, so R D for R delta. Okay. So for R B, so R B, so the numerator is the same. So R B, so you have you did that. We just need to write RD all over what is the opposite of RB in the y, in the y connected resistor, which is RY. So RD is this one, then over RY and for RC, so same, the same process. So what is above is RD, the numerator is RD then it will be divided by what is opposite of rc that is r x and you have now your formula on converting y connected resistors to delta connected now we will go to um we will now go to delta to y so delta to y okay so what so the we are now converting the resistors which is connected in delta to y which is inside so for example we have rx so rx so that is the resistor inside rx so 
first we will get first the numerator so then we will multiply the two adjacent resistors in the delta to the y connected resistor for example rx the two adjacent is ra and rb so that is ra times rb and you will get all over the sum of the resistance of the resistors connected in delta so ra plus rb plus rc so next we will go to ry so same process so the adjacent is ra so this is our ry so ra and rc so ra times rc all over same ra plus rb plus rc next we have our rz r z is equal to so this is our rz the adjacent r r b and r c so we have r b times r c all over r a plus r b plus r c and you now have your formula for conversion of delta connected resistor into y connected resistor so i will not advise you to memorize the formula just try to familiarize yourself on how to get the formula because if you're going to memorize the formula you will be memorizing six formulas so in the next videos after this we will try to solve problems involving this one and we also try to answer some um, theory questions or some multiple choice questions involving our five topics no? so from lesson one to this lesson i guess this is lesson five electrical circuits okay so that is the end of the discussion so the next set of lessons will be about um, network uh, theorems so we'll tackle letter of Kirchhoff's law and we'll proceed to ac circuit so yeah, thank you for watching i hope you learned something and for and like i said as always to in order to pass the exam keep studying